Hey everyone, it's River. My cameraman followed Alan Chapman into the void and my girlfriend doesn't love me. So today's going to look a bit different. To the topic at hand, I love esotericism and theology, but with all the various lineages and styles like Gnosticism, Kabbalah, alchemy, Buddhism, masonry, and Thelema, just to name a small handful, all with their diverse and specific subcultures and philosophies, we come to an immediate difficulty that people love to declare themselves entirely correct on whatever it is that they say and think with little room for growth or reconciliation between the other topics. TLDR, this is why people are infuriating. In fact, you see this ramped up quickly when the group doesn't even have similar sources, textual experience, and obviously their personal interpretations to connect with and discuss. So they simply end up yelling at each other over nothing. I want to come forward with a video that I believe, while attempting to be decently objective, can help some of us bury the hatchet as we continue our learning. Now that we've set the stage, I've categorized three major issues and we'll go at each one after another. They being one, the egotist, two, sources and experience, and three, intrinsic conflict. With every step made into esoteric theology and occultism, there are bound to be people that just really miss the mark. They preach their own self-centered benefactor and are summed up as an egotist. When you hear about the dangers of the occult, the first thing you're normally dealing with is a group of self-centered individuals. Thus, they're ultimately dangerous in a spiritual context and adversely active to your own progression. Self-service in many ways has even become the selling point of esotericism because of the waves of wishful thinkers and self-will-centric dross that saw only the tip of the iceberg as it relates to occult theory and practices. They don't understand the material so they pervert it, emphasize superiority complexes, and in the end wash out whatever secrets were to be had, creating intrinsically perpetuating cycles of degradation. It's the creation of occult mentality, a loss of the ideas surrounding divine benevolence, of which all esotericism is rooted, and I really mean rooted, into these spiritually positive subjects. Thankfully, these people are super easy to identify as they're likely some guy named Eric, but prefer to go by Zamorak, Thumb of the Black Hand, Master of the Forces, because one, he's uncreative, two, he thinks he's the only person cool enough to be the present scaper of runes, and three, it boosts his ego. Sidebar, I understand the importance of mystical names and why they're used in a lot of circles, but that's besides the point. I'm literally painting it just for the sake of understanding the extent that some people will go. But quite obviously, not everyone is an egotist. In fact, it's a small space of the occult community that has little to give in the first place, yet unfortunately also happens to be the most available or outspoken in the more general social contact points, garnering or gathering the people that actually want to know these things and be fully developed with some sort of relationship with the divinity or some mystical practice. But... Those newcomers typically have no real foundation to even distinguish between a knower and an unknower, leading them into the semi-mundane, which while impressive at first, is a dead end and ultimately pointless. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we're on to the less drastic yet still pertinent issue of sources and experience. At face value, this shouldn't be a problem at all. Different subjects have a variety of material books and teachers, all of which offer their own interpretation, expansions, and revelations. However, I've noticed that instead of opening some sort of constructive argument, it is almost immediately a runaround of who's who and why the other person is wrong, leaving nothing to be gained for either party. The goal is not to fight the person verbally, but to start a critical analysis of the topic overall, supported by reference and or logical inferences. To even begin doing this properly, people need a foundation. But as mentioned in the first issue of The Egotist, being at this point the little ego in all of us, the opportunity for growth falls on deaf ears of the unwilling. Some even claiming to be enlightened souls, which shockingly is way more common to come across than the ancient peoples would have you believe. In fact, there's a couple hundred thousand on Facebook right now misquoting Bible verses and trying to correct people on delicate matters while having no understanding of transliteration or the history of the text in question. I'm looking at you, Golden Dawn. I'm not using this as an argument purporting that occultists and esotericists are inherently ignorant. I'm just saying that typically their well of references and inference are immensely limited even to the subject they claim to be in alignment with more than any other. 
Even I feel guilty of this because there's always more to be learned. Yet at times we have to do the best we can to come to a reasonably sealed conclusion and admit our shortcoming. Of course, there are exceptions to this, which will segue this brief talk into the final issue, intrinsic conflict. You may be wondering what I mean by intrinsic conflict, and in short, just like the issues that arose while talking on sources and experience, we come to the basics of disagreements, that of protecting personal viewpoints or the rejection of another person's statements and claims. Obviously, this is necessary for us to develop because without it, we would live in an intellectually artificial scenario in which everyone is always perfectly correct. But we already know this is implausible. It defines the very essence of why esotericism and occultism are so strong, because it appeals to the mental aspect of human beings by way of some mystical tie to a divine source, whereby they might make sense of the world via metaphysics and philosophy, or come to further generalizations in understanding that holds an intimate relationship to the higher levels of human thought. So lastly, we have to ask ourselves, what do we do to rectify this issue? First of all, people really need to establish easily accessible collections of text and material with a guided learning curve, thereby giving new people proper introductions into each area or field of study, which will naturally clean up the pool of newly interested partakers of occultism. Of course, this isn't surefire, as there will always be an ambience of capitalism within certain circles, but we can't get everyone aside from providing a greater mass of learning and learned individuals that value the heart of esotericism, these pursuers of truth. Which brings me to a final mention uh, that I really wanted to make, the purpose behind why I make videos and what I'm looking to do with them. The idea is that reaching out to everyone with an esotericism-centric video list that eventually all paths of mysticism can eventually be explored, and through that connection we can foster a new scene in the occult world, one that is empowered by a sure foundation and simple progression. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for your time.